Does 1 John 1 9 disprove once saved, always saved? Hi, I'm Bob Wilkin with Grace Evangelical Society, and I have some good news for you today. A group of pastors and Bible scholars prepared a documentary film called Once Saved, Always Saved? Question mark. In this documentary, uh, two of their scholars and two of their pastors discuss 1 John 1 9 and the issue of fellowship with God and how that relates to retaining your salvation. The two scholars they have in this section of the film, the documentary, are Drs. Michael Brown and Dr. David Burkett. And the pastors are Pastors Joe Schimmel and Pastor Zach Poonen. And these men say that 1 John 1, 9 proves that once saved, always saved is false. I'd encourage you to go and look at the documentary. It's free. It's online. Just look up Once Saved, Always Saved, a documentary film. And the section we're going to look at today is from 5612 to 5719. So just over a minute. The central error of the hypergrace message is that the moment you're saved, God not only forgives your past and present sins, He not only forgives who you are and what you've done, but at that moment, He forgives every sin that you will ever commit in the future. All your past sins are forgiven when you're first saved, but your future sins are not pre-forgiven. In other words, you start with a clean slate, but you can muddy that slate again. Uh, we know that we're forgiven our past sins, not our future sins, because in 2 Peter chapter 1, it warns about those who forget that they were cleansed from their past sins. That's why we read in James chapter 5, verse 19 and 20, when the brother who is brought back after he falls away from the Lord, it says you'll save a soul from death and hide a multitude of sins. That's why we're told that we're to confess our sins, and then he's faithful and just to forgive us our sins. If people say their future sins are also forgiven, like some people do preach, then 1 John 2, 1, 1 John 1, 9 is meaningless. If we confess our sins, he's faithful and just to forgive us. I'll say, Lord, I have to confess nothing. They're already forgiven. Now, they fail to explain why if someone is out of fellowship with God, that means they've lost their salvation. They seem to think that because believers need daily forgiveness of sins, Therefore, the salvation of believers is in jeopardy. If we were ever to fail to gain forgiveness of our sins for that day, then we would lose salvation that day. This, this seems to be their reasoning. They never quite lay it out, but this seems to be their point. Major premise. Only people in fellowship with God are saved. Minor premise, 1 John 1, 9 says that if a believer fails to confess his sins, then he is out of fellowship with God. Conclusion, 1 John 1, 9 teaches that salvation is lost every time a believer fails to confess his sins. Brian, if you would, put 1 John 1, 9 up on the screen. Take a look at it. If we confess our sins, He is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. The issue here is forgiveness and cleansing. The issue is having fellowship with God. Notice 1 John 1, 9 doesn't say anything about everlasting life, doesn't say anything about justification, doesn't say anything about salvation, doesn't say anything about eternal condemnation. The issue here is whether a believer is in fellowship with God or out of fellowship with God. Now, if you take them... Uh, at face value, what they seem to be saying is, if a believer commits sin and the Holy Spirit convicts him of it, and he fails to confess one sin, 
then that believer has lost his salvation. However, Pastor Joe Schimmel wants to make it clear that that's not quite his view. Maybe that's not quite all of their view. What Pastor Schimmel says is that one failure to confess your sins, your known sins, won't cause you to lose your salvation. Here's what he says between 5719 and 5737. There's too many scriptures that are over throughout the New Testament. It's what the early church taught as well. You must continue to confess your sins. Now, if we die and there's one sin unconfessed, well, guess what? We're branches in the vine. Uh, falling short of the Lord, Lord's glory doesn't sever us from the vine. It's apostasy that severs us from the vine. Uh, that's a continual rebellion against God. Schimmel says that one unconfessed sin won't sever you or me from the vine. Why not? I thought their view was we have to confess our sins to have remain in fellowship with God, and if we're out of fellowship with God, then we've lost our salvation. How many sins do we have to fail to confess? According to Pastor Schimmel, it is a continual rebellion against God. So how long is continual? Is that a week? A month? A year? How long is that? Of course, Schimmel's definition of apostasy is not correct. Apostasy is a falling away from the faith. Normally we think of this as doctrinally denying one of the fundamentals of the faith. You could even refer to moral apostasy where someone falls away from the faith in terms of his Christian practice. But apostasy does not have to take place over a long period of time. The moment one ceases to believe a fundamental truth of Scripture, he has become an apostate. Now, all of the statements that the Lord Jesus Christ makes about the security of the believer show that being out of fellowship with God cannot cause us to lose our salvation. All of those never statements, Jesus says, the one who believes in him will never perish, John 3, 16. Will never thirst, John 4, 10 through 14, John 6, 35. Will never hunger, John 6, 35. Will never be cast out, John 6, 37. Will never die spiritually, John 11, 26. The believer is secure forever because the Lord guarantees it. And whether we're in fellowship with God or out of fellowship with God, that does not change our status as children of God. Once we've been saved, we are always saved. Did you know that the Lord never once said, He who believes in me has the forgiveness of sins? I'd encourage you to do a concordance study on the words forgive, forgiven, forgiveness, and especially look at the Gospel of John, which is the only evangelistic book in the Bible. What you'll find is not once in his evangelistic ministry in the Gospel of John did the Lord Jesus ever bring up the forgiveness of sins. In fact, he only mentions the forgiveness of sins in John 20, after he rose from the dead, and then talking to the apostles about them forgiving or retaining sins. So it's a mistake to think that somehow, if a believer is out of fellowship with God, then he has lost everlasting life. In conclusion, 1 John 1, 9 does not disprove once saved, always saved. It's not dealing with the issue of salvation. It's dealing with the issue of ongoing fellowship with God. Imagine what this would be like in your family. Let's say a husband and a wife got in a major argument, and somehow you're not in fellowship with your spouse anymore. Bing, you're no longer married. You have to go through some sort of ceremony again to get married again. Let's say your teenage son is in rebellion against you. Well then, boom, he's no longer your son. And you have to figure out some way to get him back into your family because he's lost his status as your child. 
He's no longer that way. That's the way these men think of our relationship with God. If we're out of fellowship with God, we've suddenly lost our position as children of God. That's not what the scriptures teach. The scriptures are clear that once we believe in the Lord Jesus Christ, we have everlasting life and will never perish. That's truly good news. Don't you think that once saved, always saved is good news? If you liked what you heard today, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe to our channel. And remember, keep grace in focus.